Hello and good evening guys and welcome to this live marathon session of cost and management. Audit, how are you all? Please confirm if I am audible and visible to all of you. Are you listening to me? Are you watching me? Please confirm in the chat box. Good evening Ankita, good evening Twinkle, Tejasvi, Nidhi, Jalki, uh, uh, Gilgal, Shankar, Abhishek Kumar, Nidhi, Lakshmidhar, Dipun, Ashutosh, Aarti. Good evening everyone and welcome to this live session yes we are doing marathon of cost and management audit one of the most scoring subjects of your syllabus and yes this uh, subject is going to give you that extra edge which um, will bridge your gap between pass and fail which can actually give you benefit of set off so yes very very scoring subject cost and management audit good evening good evening guys hello good evening yes welcome yes am i audible yes sir, you are absolutely audible so yesterday was the first class of cost and management audit marathon. And yes, in the yesterday's class, we had covered first chapter of our syllabus, which is basics of cost audit guys. And yes, that chapter can, um, you know, come in the examination for range of say four marks, five marks, etc. So that is the um, uh, first chapter. Today we are going to start the second chapter. And yes, the most important chapter of your syllabus guys, very, very important from a practical standpoint, as well as from theoretical standpoint, the most important chapter of your syllabus chapter number two, that is what we are going to start today. So quickly, quickly, guys, please write in the chat box. How's the Josh for the upcoming examination? Are we all set to rock CMA final group four examination and have those three alphabets before our name C M A. Are we all set? How's the Josh guys? Please comment in the comment section. Yes. Shreya Ghate, Yogesh, Vishal, Manisha, Tejasvi. Yes, we all have. Amazing, amazing, amazing Josh and full high. We are full on energy guys because yes, quick time check uh, uh, for the examination guys. Time is very, very less now, you know, approximately um, uh, uh, one, one, even less than one and a half months to go for your examination. So yes, we need to gear up. We cannot afford now to leave even one hour wasted. Even one hour we cannot afford to, um, uh, you know, waste in our preparations tree. So yes. An amazing, amazing, amazing time to put in our heart and soul, okay? Put in a hundred percent to this goal called CMA. And yes, we'll be able to achieve this goal very, very, very easily. So yes, let's start today's session, guys. And today's session is dedicated to Com Companies, Cost Records and Audit Rules 2014. The most important rules of your syllabus. And yes, from this particular chapter, you can easily expect questions worth 15 marks in your examination. 10 to 15 marks dedicated to this particular chapter. And um, uh, why, what, what, what kind of questions can be asked? Theoretical as well as practical. Both kind of questions can be asked. Theoretical as well as practical questions. Uh, both can be asked. Sir, office ke baad energy low rehti hai. Lekin chalega meko because hume vanna hai CMA. Yes, bilkul chalega energy ko low rehte hue bhi. Padhai karna hai. Humko achche marks lana hai. Aur exam mein qualify karna hai. So let's start. Companies, cost records and audit rules 2014. Guys, yesterday while studying section 148. Now let me ask you, okay. What is section 148? One for, please comment in the comment section. Let me see how many of you have seen yesterday's marathon. Section 148 subsection 1 is for what? What is the purpose of the section? Section 148 subsection 1. Let me see in the comment section. What is your answer to this question? Although I still have group 3 to clear later, I always dream of seeing myself with that title every day. Yes, Abhishek. Amazing, amazing. <clears throat> okay, guys. Yesterday, we started one section. 148 1. Please comment in the chat box. What is the subject matter of that subsection? Subsection 1 of section 148. Perfect. <clears throat> Tanisha Jain is wrong. Tanish Jain is wrong. Perfect. Rest everyone is uh, absolutely fine. Joshika, Alagu, Ajnaz, Arti, Lavanya. Cost records. Very good, guys. Very, very good. So, cost records. Uh, who should prepare cost records? That is section 148.1. And yes, Arti has answered my next question. My next question was, what is section 148 subsection 2? Arti has already answered it. It's cost audit. Perfect, guys. So, guys, these are the rules which are related to two things, cost records and cost audit. Who shall prepare the cost audit? Who shall get the cost audit done? Who shall prepare the cost records? Everything will be clarified under these rules and these rules are amended up till 2019 
which are there in your syllabus. So these are 2014 rules, but amended till 2019. So you can actually, um, uh, you know, uh, you have to actually do all the amendments which have come by in these rules up to 2019. So let us start this session by giving you a brief history of cost records and cost audit rules which were existing uh, prior to these rules. Guys, earlier cost audit was ordered on a company basis, which means that individual companies were selected and those companies were instructed to get their cost audit done. So this company-based cost records and cost audit scenario was changed to industry-based cost records and cost audit scenario, which means now a product will be identified and everyone who's making that particular product will be asked to prepare its cost records, of course, subject to certain monetary threshold limit. So in earlier scenario, only a few companies were selected for uh, cost audit purposes and they were named in an order that these are the names of the companies uh, whose cost audit is required to be done. Now, no such order comes uh, from the ministry. Uh, you have been given monetary thresholds. If your turnover is above those monetary thresholds, you will be required to get your cost records prepared and get your cost audit done. Okay, so this is a brief history of these cost records. All right, let's start the cost records, rules, uh, cost records and audit rules. And yes, rule number one, is the title title is companies cost records and audit rules 2014 that is the title of this um, uh, rules rule two are certain definitions and these are very straightforward definitions guys so you know uh, you can do it yourself ah now we come on to the most important rule rule three and guys rule three corresponds to section 148 subsection one which is cost records now you must be wondering since yesterday who what are those companies who are uh, required to get their cost records prepared what are those companies of you know in in whom in whose case cost records are required to be prepared all your answers will be answered today in rule number 3 so in rule number 3 we are going to see what are the companies what are the situations what are the scenarios in which cost records are mandatorily required to be made so what are cost records cost records are comprised of three things utilization of material utilization of labor and other item of cost which cumulatively directs you to cost sheet so you need to prepare cost sheet and the supporting energies, supporting ledger um, accounts, supporting uh, details of the balances. You have to prepare all these things that will be termed as your cost records. So cost records, applicability of cost records. Rule three is the rule where application of cost records are required to be analyzed and required to be um, seen by you. So cost records. Now any company, including a foreign company, please note each and every word. Each and every word of this rule is very, very important. Very, very important. Okay. Any company, including a foreign company, engaged in production of goods or providing services. So any company, which means the section is wide open, it, it is applicable to um, any company, including a foreign company, which is engaged in production of goods or providing services. So two mandatory things which are required to be fulfilled are you should be producing certain goods, you should be providing certain services, which are specified under the tables below. No, no, not every goods and services, but only those goods and services which are specified in the tables below shall be required to prepare cost records for such products or services in their books of accounts. It is mandatory that for these products, the products which are listed over there, for these products, you need to mandatorily prepare cost records in your books of accounts. Now, what are these uh, products? So guys, these products are divided into two parts, category A and category B. Category A is the regulated sector, which means that this sector is bound by some law. This sector is bound by some legal provisions, by some ministry, or they are regulated by government of India directly. So there are two uh, tables. Table one, category A products, which are regulated sector. These sectors are regulated or these are, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, these are uh, led with compliances by the government of India. What are these uh, sectors? Telecommunication sectors, including transmission, reception of signs, signals, writing images, sounds or intelligence of any nature or broadcasting services. So guys, this is a very uh, wide, uh, um, uh, you know, category where even if you are broadcasting pictures, which means Instagram, okay, or Snapchat, or any kind of social media platform where you are exchanging images, sound or intelligence of any nature, broadcasting services is uh, categorized under this particular section. So even your WhatsApp will be categorized under this particular uh, section. So everything which is related to broadcasting of signs, signals, uh, sounds, image, movie, anything that is covered under this, uh, uh, this provision, telecommunication, uh, Telecom Regulatory Authority of India, which is TRI, is the responsible act. Next is generation, transmission, distribution and supply of electricity. Very, very, very important regulated sector, guys. If you are into generation, transmission, distribution or supply, there are four things which are included in the section. If you are doing any one of the four activities with respect to supply of electricity, be it generation, be it transmission, 
be it distribution or supply, you are eligible to prepare your cost records. The next is petroleum products. Again, eligible to prepare your cost records, drugs and pharmaceuticals, fertilizers, sugar and industrial alcohol. These are the regulated sectors. So if you are um, uh, you know, producing any one of these category of products, then subject to the monetary threshold, you are required to prepare your cost records. And what are cost records? Cost records are um, uh, uh, cost records are um, uh, the records which are uh, required to be maintained as per the cost sheet, as per the cost sheet. Okay. And <clears throat> one very amazing shortcut tri trick told to us by by Arti Jain, T's PDF, T's PDF. Okay. So shortcut is T's PDF, T. E A S P D F. This is the shortcut trick um, by which you can remember these uh, uh, these all these provisions, guys. So this is uh, telecommunication generation, transmission, distribution of electricity, petroleum products, drugs, pharmaceuticals, fertilizer, sugar, industrial alcohol. Okay. And yes, guys, from this particular aspect, uh, examiner is not going to ask the entire uh, section, the entire uh, list of services or goods, but is going to ask. Um, you know, specific questions from this particular type. Okay. Now comes the second category of goods, category B, which is the unregulated sector, which means that this sector is free from any regulation from government of India. And this particular sector has um, uh, no regulations which are which they are bound uh, within their production capacity. So, you know, their production capacity is not bound. Their selling capacity is not bound. Their marketing is not bound. They are not bound by anything. So these are unregulated sector and there are 33 industries which are specified under this unregulated sector. So what are these 33 industries? These 33 industries are machinery, mechanical appliances used in defense, space, atomic energy. Okay. Um, now even the companies which are engaged in any item or supplied exclusively for use under this clause shall be deemed to be covered under this rules. Now very, very important inclusion guys. So all the companies which are um, produce, producing something which is exclusively used in uh, defense, space, atomic energy, etc. Then guys, those companies are also covered under this particular category. So there's a company which is preparing defense equipments. There's another company who's supplying some goods to defense equipment exclusively. Then that other company will also be falling under this category. That is the um, uh, uh, rule. So turbo jets, turbo propellers, arms, ammunition, explosives, propellant powder, prepared explosive, other than powder, safety fuses, de no detonating fuses, percursion or detonating caps. So guys, you do not need to remember or, uh, you know, mug up each and every word. You just have to read these entire list thrice and you'll be able to identify in the examination if uh, the examiner asks you. However, however, examiner just generally doesn't ask these names of these products. But if it asks you, it will click you. So do not try to mug up this entire uh, list of uh, products. It is virtually impossible to, um, uh, you know, mug up this entire list of um, uh, products. Okay. Okay, sir. <clears throat> So next is radar appar apparatus, radar apparatus, port services of uh, Stephen Doring, pilot, pilotage, etc., etc. All these are covered under the category of uh, unregulated goods. Iron and steel, roads and other infrastructure projects, rubber, allied products, coffee, inorganic chemical, etc., etc. So you can, you know, um, uh, you can cover this entire list properly. And yes, you need to read this entire list. One very amazing section, guys. Health services, health services, namely functioning, running of hospitals, diagnostic centers, um, uh, clinical centers, test laboratory, etc. Exclusions are companies running hospitals exclusively for its own employees are um, uh, you know excluded from this category. So if you run a hospital, but only for your employees, you are excluded from this category. Second one, companies engaged in running of beauty parlors and beauty treatment. So very very good news for all the girls out here. For all the girls. Um, beauty parlor and beauty treatment is exempt from cost um, uh, records. So naturally, they'll be exempt from cost audit also. So beauty parlors, beauty treatment is not covered under this category. Education services are ca covered under this particular category. Okay. Milk powder, insecticide. So you can read this entire list. This list is very, very important from an exam standpoint. Okay. One very important thing which you need, note, which you need to note at this point in time, guys. Please note the category 33rd. Please note the category 33rd, okay? Please note this category 33. So guys, generally, the cost records are applicable only where you produce a particular product. They are not applicable where you are just trading in a particular product. However, in clause 33, production, import, supply or trading, trading, this is the only 
category out of the 33 categories which includes trading as well so in this particular category guys even when you are not manufacturing these medical equipments even when you are not um, producing these medical equipments but even if you are just trading in these uh, uh, medical equipments you will be eligible for cost records one very very important thing to be noted in clause number 33 please underline it please um, uh, wherever is your um, you know notebook or wherever is your book whichever book you are referring to please underline this particular part exclusions the rule is not applicable which means cost records are not applicable cost records are not applicable to foreign companies having only liaison office in india liaison office means the office which does only marketing function in india so a foreign company which is having only liaison office in india with respect to product category 33 above this category guys so if you have a foreign uh, company which is having a license office in India with respect to product 33, it is exempt from cost records, even if it is, um, you know, uh, producing any of these things. It is trading in any of these things. Second is micro enterprise or small enterprise as per the MSMED Act. So MSMED Act is an act which safeguards the interest of small, small enterprises and uh, mini enterprises. Um, that act permits, uh, you know, the companies to... Uh, pay on time. It it uh, requires commitment from the companies to pay on time to these MSMEDs, to these uh, small and medium enterprises. So guys, in this particular act, whatever is the definition of micro and small enterprise, they are exempt from, um, uh, you know, preparing the cost records. The exemption has been granted to them. There's a definition of MSMED, what is micro, what is medium, given under this particular table. Okay. Now, what is the monetary threshold for rule three? This is a very, very important point, guys. Very, very important. And I need to uh, read each and every word of this particular line very, very carefully. So, monetary threshold for applicability of Rule 3, Table A as well as Table B products is that the overall turnover of the company, please underline this word. This word is very, very important. The overall turnover of the company from all the products and services during immediately preceding financial year is 35 crores or more. Now, very, very important point. Turnover from all the uh, products of this particular company. It is not only those products which are specified under table A and B, but is all the products which are covered under, um, uh, which are produced by the company, to turnover, total turnover um, shall not exceed, if, if, if it exceeds 35 crores, then cost records is applicable to them. Okay, 35 crores or more, then cost records is applicable to them. Overall, turnover of the company should be 35 crore or more. Okay, now let me give you some examples and you need to um, actually tell me in the comment section whether cost records are required to be prepared in this case or not. Okay. I'll give you certain examples and you tell me whether cost records are required to be prepared or not. There's a company, company X. Okay. It produces product X, product Y, Product Z, okay. Product X is table A product. Product X is table A product. Product A is, um, uh, you know, purchased and uh, it is sold worth rupees twenty five lakhs. Product Y is being sold at um, uh, as 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 fifteen crores. Products Z being sold at. 20 crores, whether cost records will be applicable in this case or not. Whether cost records will be applicable in this case or not. I have product X, table A, table A product. Product Y, no table. Product Z, no table. 25 lakhs is product X, product Y is 15 crores, product Z is 20 crores. Whether cost records will be applicable in this case or not. Yes or no. Yes or no. Very good answer, yes. Perfect. Yes. Perfect. So guys, we will see the total turnover of the company and total turnover of the company is 35.25 crores. 35.25 crores is the total turnover of the company. So it is exceeding 35 crores. Of course, yes, cost records are required to be prepared in this particular case. Cost records are required to be prepared in this particular case. Now, my next question to you is, please listen to my next question very, very carefully. Please listen to my next question very, very carefully. Cost records are required to be prepared for which of these products? Product X, product Y, product Z or all of them? Yes, you are right. Cost records are required to be prepared. Cost records is applicable. My next question is, 
which of the product uh, should I prepare the cost records? Should it be product X, product Y, product Z? What will it be? Only product X or all the products? That is the question. Please answer my question. All the products or only product X? And guys, a very, very deep question. So please, um, uh, you know, answer it after thinking and looking at the section ones. If you can look at the section ones, then perfect. So some, some people are saying all the products, some are saying table A. Uh, all of the products. Ashutesh say, says all of the products. Nivya says all of the products. Amitesh X, Ajnaz X, Tejasvi X, Surinder all, Joshika all. Okay, okay. So guys, the correct answer is, the correct answer is only product X. Only product X. Cost records are required to be prepared only for product X. So why are you saying this? Let's read the language of the section. Let's read the language of the section and you'll be able to understand why I'm saying this. Let's read the language of the question. Okay. Okay. Let's read it together. Any company engaged in production of goods or providing services specified in table below shall be required to prepare cost records for such product, not for all the products, for such products or services in their books of accounts. So please read the section and please interpret the section well. I know there'll be some difficulties which will be faced by you because it's it's not a straightforward uh, you know section. It's a difficult section. It's a uh, twisted section. But for which product the cost records are required to be prepared? Only product X. For only product X, the cost records are required to be prepared. Okay. Okay, sir. Now let me change my example. Let me change my example. Okay, product X, we are producing to the extent of zero. Product Y, 40 crores. Product X, product Z, <clears throat> 15 crores. Total turnover, 55 crores. So guys, unfortunately in this year, we have not produced product X. We have not sold product X. Okay. If turnover includes excluded products, then excluded products are also included in the turnover, guys. So product Y and Z are excluded products only. Product Y and Z are excluded. So they will be included in the turnover while calculating the total turnover. They will be included. My question to you is, uh, product X, we did not purchase and sell product X at all. So it's zero. Product Y, 40, Z, 15. Whether cost records is applicable or not. And if yes, on which product? Cost records will be applicable or not? Goshal says not applicable. Twinkle says applicable hoga. Aarti says applicable hoga. Sir, if turnover excluded product, I've already answered. Nivya says no. Who else, guys? Please write your answers quickly. Please write your answers quickly. I want to see how many of you are giving the... Mansi says no. Amitesh says X, which means Amitesh says that, uh, you know, cost records are required to be prepared. It is applicable to... A, in earlier year, cost records were applicable, then in all subsequent years, it will be applicable. No, no, Vishek, it is not about earlier year or current year. It is a fresh company, fresh case. Don't link with earlier example. Don't link with earlier example. Joshika says, no, cost records will not be required to be prepared. Harshit Verma says, X. Surinder says, N. So guys, the correct answer is, cost records are not required to be prepared. Because one of the prime conditions is that you should have some turnover from the specified goods you should have some turnover from the specified goods the specified goods like table a goods table b goods you should have some turnover with respect to the specified goods that is the bottom line that is the benchmark if you have no um, uh, production or no sales and no turnover from the specified goods then even if your turnover is over 35 crores you are not required to prepare your cost records so cost records are not required to be prepared in this particular case cost records are not required to be prepared Okay, got it. Yes, sir. Got it. Okay. I'll change my example. Okay. I'll give one more uh, example. And this time the example will be a little complicated. Yes. So are you ready for the example? Are you ready for the next example? Write yes in the chat box. Write yes in the chat box. Next example will be a little complicated. Okay. 
product x which is covered its turnover is 15 lakhs product y again it is being manufactured not covered under table a or table b okay it is manufactured uh, the turnover is say 2 crores product z we are not manufacturing product z we are only trading in product z now third example is very very critical guys we are not manufacturing product z we are only trading in product z okay and the turnover is 40 crores total turnover is 42.15 crores 42.15 crores <clears throat> now you need to tell me whether cost records is applicable or not please note product z is only trading no manufacture product by manufacture product x manufacture table a 15 lakh 15 lakh manufacture 2 crores trading 40 crores whether cost records will be applicable or not please note product z is trading it's not production it's not production and it is not uh, 33 clause uh, product it is not 33 product uh, 33 clause clause product is it if we are talking about cost records please don't talk about cost audit Ajnas, don't talk about cost audit. We are not talking about audit. We are talking about records as of now. It's only records. Please tell me whether cost records are required to be prepared or not. Yes or no? Aarti Jain says no. Joshika says applicable. Lakshmidhar says applicable. Milan says applicable. Yes, Ashutosh says applicable. Guys, all of you should, you know, give the answer so that your concepts will also, um, uh, you know, be strong. And guys, definitely do hit the like button, guys. Before we move ahead, please do hit the like button. That is one thing which will give me energy to, you know, continue with these marathons. Yes, answer is yes, cost records are applicable. Irrespective of whether you are trading in any goods or manufacturing in any goods, irrespective of that, you are definitely uh, covered under cost records. And which uh, uh, product cost records will be required to be prepared? Only product X. Not all the products, only product X. Chalo. Okay? Yes, it will be applicable. No, no, Z will not be applicable. No, no, Z, we will not prepare cost records for Z. Chalo. Next example. Next example. And this time, I'll give you a even more critical example. All right. Please note my next example. Product X. Product Y. Product Z. Turnover of product X. 5 lakhs. Product Y. Product Y. Twenty crores. Okay, product Z, <coughs> product Z, thirty-four crores. No, not thirty-four, but fourteen crores. Okay, let this be fifty lakhs. Okay, so this is the. Bifurcation. I'm adding one more thing. Scrap sale. Scrap sale is 70 lakhs. Scrap sale is 70 lakhs. Now you need to tell me whether cost records are applicable or not in this particular case. Different example. And yes, guys, you, you can write these examples in your register. Very, very useful for understanding purposes. Now, please tell me. Scrap sale, 70 lakh rupees of scrap sale. Very, very interesting. And I'm really excited to listen to your answers. Very, very interesting case which I have created. Whether cost records will be applicable or not. If you exclude scrap sales, then it is coming out to be less than 35 crores. If you include scrap sales, then it will be more than 35 crores. What will be your answer? I'm really, really excited to listen to your answer. Yes, very good. That's like my future CMAs. All of you are future CMAs. Very good answer by all of you. I'm very, very happy. Goshal says, scrap sale is excluded. So no. Oh, Applicable, applicable, applicable. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, guys, you are very, very right. You are very, very right, guys. Yes, it is applicable. So while you are calculating the total turnover of the company, scrap sale is also included as a part of total turnover of the company. And therefore, in this case, since the total turnover is exceeding 35 crores, product X will be subject to cost records. Cost records will be applicable in case of product X. 
so this time i want all of you to uh, clap for yourself clap for yourself yes even if you are at your home clap for yourself even if your parents feel that you have gone crazy clap for yourself because you've given an amazing answer amazing answer and it was pretty tricky guys because these tricks are um, uh, uh, really you know they can um, uh, cost you your marks but you are very confident about your answers and i'm really liking this fact that you are really confident about your answers so yes this was the limit of 35 crores which has been specified and we have done various cases in which this 35 crores can you know vary and uh, what are the possible probabilities that can come in your examination all right now please remember this form very very important form cra1 uh, uh, which is the format of cost records form cra1 which is the format of cost records okay all right guys so yes you have completed your discussion on cost records yes we have completed our discussion on cost records okay let's do some uh, easy easy exercises guys i hope you are able to see the exercises well okay let's do some easy exercises okay diy do it yourself so please give me the answer of this question maharaja private limited purchases a raw material steel coil and then do some cutting or drawing work on it either by self or through a job worker and then it sells in market cfo of the company considers it as trading sale cfo is saying it is not manufactured it is trading okay uh, uh, accord your opinion on whether cost records or audit is applicable on this sale if the turnover exceeds the prescribed limits you need to tell whether you know cutting raw material cutting there are steel coils what are steel coils steel coils are uh, you know rolled like this there are uh, long long length wires which are there like this what is the role of this particular maharaja private limited it just cuts steel uh, coil into small small pieces whether this cutting will qualify as manufacture or not whether this cutting of steel coil will qualify as manufacture or not that is the um, uh, you know a question goshal says cutting or drawing op is manufacturing hence opinion of the cfo is incorrect brilliant brilliant answer arti's answer is incorrect cutting to make a new thing so yes applicable very good superb superb yes guys this is manufacture even if you are cutting something into small small pieces it tend amounts to manufacture because you are changing the um, uh, the uh, the entire over uh, use of that particular uh, wire because you know if it is a long wire then you will not purchase it if you are a retail customer you will not purchase that long wire if you are having only long wire so very very good answer brilliant so diy2 please read carefully Sanjeevni Bhuti, City Hospital, specializes in test tube baby technology. Are these services covered under Rule Three? Presume that they fulfill the turnover criteria. Test tubes, test tubes, test tubes. Form change ho gayi thodi. Twinkle, form change ho gayi. Form change ho gayi. Yes. Why form change ho gayi? Because um, uh, you know the people who want smaller um, uh, parts, they will only buy smaller parts. They will not take the entire um, uh, entire length of the wire. So manufacture is there. Okay, test tubes. Are they covered? Yes, they are covered. Very good answer by Goshal, Twinkle, Lakshmi Dhar, Amitesh. Very good answer. Yes, yes. Very, very good answer. Superb guys. So yes, it is covered under Rule Three. Very much covered under Rule Three. Okay, Messrs. Mahakal Enterprises, Private Limited, manufactures and sell wooden furniture. Okay, they are into selling of wooden furniture. Total turnover of the company during financial year eighteen nineteen was fifty crores. Fifty crores is the total turnover, guys. More than thirty five crores. Whether the company is required to prepare cost records under Rule three or not. Whether cost records are required to be prepared or not. Ah, twinkle, समझ में आ गई बात. ठीक है. Okay, you please tell me, guys, whether cost records will be applicable or not. The turnover is fifty crores. Turnover is fifty crores. Whether cost records is applicable or not. Part C, please comment in the <coughs> comment section. Manisha says required. Ankita says no. Joshika says no. Nidhi says required. Harsha says no. Mansi says no. Please give the reasons also, guys. What is the reason? If you are saying no, cost records are not required. Then what is the reason? Please give the reason also. What is the reason? Abhishek says yes. Yogesh says yes. Sachin says yes. Sachin Bangar says above thirty-five crores. Okay, okay. Milan says no. <laughs> i'm really loving it i'm liking it because um, you know you are really really performing well guys <clears throat> okay the correct answer is no cost records are not applicable why because furniture wooden furniture is not 
covered under table A or table B. Wooden furniture is not covered under table B or table A or table B. Even if the turnover is more than 35 crores, cost records will not be applicable in this particular case. So not applicable. Furniture is not applicable. Very good, guys. So yes, guys, question can trick you in any manner, in any manner, okay? Okay, next, next, next. In the above example, company suffered a sudden reduction in the demand of wooden furniture. Okay. So uh, the company has suffered a uh, sudden reduction in demand of wooden furniture in FI 2019-20 and its turnover dropped to 37 crores. Okay. So earlier the turnover was 50 crores, now it is 37 crores. Hence the, hence the company introduced a new range of product made out of jute. Financially, in 1920, company was able to sell jute products worth rupees 2 lakhs. 2 lakhs jute products were sold. Come in whether company is required to prepare cost records under Rule 3 or not. If yes, for which product? Now, guys, I want your answer, okay? I want your answer in the chat box. There are two questions which are imposed. Number one, whether company is, uh, whether company is covered under cost records or not. Secondly, for which product will the cost records be prepared? That is the question before you. Yes, come on, come on, come on, guys, come on. Let's see who will prepare the, who will uh, we'll get the right answer. Very good answer. Superb. Superb. Yes, yes, it is applicable. Record for very good. Mansi Sonavane, very good answer. Yes, Jude Pack ka record banega. Twinkle Rustagi, very good answer. Yes, cost records are required. Very good, very good. Superb. So, yes, guys, cost records are required, but only for Jude products, not for wooden furniture, as only Jude products are specified in a table A or B category. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, interesting one. Interesting. Please read this question. Interesting one. Again, a tricky one. Let me expand it as much as I can so that you can, uh, you know, view it clearly. Okay. Twinkle Private Limited. L look, Twinkle Rustagi, who's in our chat box, she has a company also. No, it's Trilok. It's not Twinkle, it's Trilok. Okay. Trilok Private Limited has given details of the products manufactured, manufactured uh, uh, or traded by it during financial year 1920. You are required to assess which products of the company is required to prepare cost records, which products are required to prepare cost records. It's manufacturing cement, insecticides, garments, hosiery. It's trading in laptops, allies, accessories, calculators, electrical appliances. Job work income is 90 lakhs. And the total turnover is 34.9 crores. Please see the total turnover. 34.9 crores. Okay. Total turnover is 34.9 crores. Apart from the above, company sold scrap from garment and hosiery division, 12 lakhs. What a question. What a question. First question, whether cost records are required to be prepared or not. Answer yes or no in the chat box. Guys, answer should be in yes or no in the chat box. Yes or no. Cost records. Yeah. Superb. Mm. Perfect. Yes, cost records is applicable. Because including the scrap scale, the turnover is above 35. Perfect answer. Perfect. Perfect answer. Question number two. For which products cost records will be prepared? For which product cost records will be prepared? For which product cost records will be prepared? Now let's see who's going to give the right answer. I'm eagerly waiting. For which products the cost records are required to be prepared? Product name. Table A, table B. Yes, I want the names. Cement and insecticide. Very good answer. Very, very good answer. Cement and insecticide. Perfect. Perfect, guys. You are prodigies already. I think you are really doing well. And yes, I have a CMA brigade who's ready to rock the corporate world. You are my CMA brigade. You are no less than a brigade. You are no less than warriors. You are no, no, no less than, you know, fighters. So amazing, amazing. Cement and insecticide. Very good. Cement and in, uh, insecticide. Perfect, perfect. All right. Next question. Dhara Oils Private Limited, leading manufacturer of edible olive oil in India. During financial in 1920, its turnover of sale of edible oil is 58 crores. Company is registered under MSMED as small enterprise. However, there is a lacuna. You know, 58 crore turnover cannot be small. But it's okay. Assume that 58 turnover is small, okay? It is registered 
as a small enterprise analyze the applicability of rule 3 whether rule 3 will be applicable or not it is an msmed it is registered as a small enterprise okay not micro and medium but small enterprise perfect 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 very good answer no not applicable not applicable very good answer not applicable perfect not applicable guys because if you are registered under the msmed act as medium as a micro and small enterprise so guys there is medium also if you are registered as a medium enterprise then cost records will be applicable on you exemption is only given to micro and small it is not given to medium okay please note this point very very carefully all right sir next gartner limited provides facility management services fms at the commercial and residential premises these include housekeeping security fire safety uh, facility management pest control landscaping ficket cleaning etc 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 the entire operational revenue of the company rupees 60 crore is from faculty management services will the activities of company be covered under construction activity as per rule 3 whether facility management services is covered under the construction um, activity under rule 3 please answer in the chat box please answer in the chat box whether this will be covered under faculty management services will be covered under rule 3 of construction activities construction activities Let's see who are so. This is uh, you know quite quite tricky. Okay, this is not easy. Ajna says no. Mansi says yes. Jyoshika says yes. Ankita says yes. Wow, wow, wow. Goshal Dake, Goshal Dake has even given the explanation correctly, guys. Brilliant, Goshal Dake. Goshal Dake, Dake. From which state are you there? From which state? And all of you guys, please mention your states. From which states are you there? i want your states from which state are you there perfect answer guys perfect answer yes it is applicable it is very much applicable guys even if you are doing facility management services that facility management services included in um, rule 3 construction activities because construction activity has a specific ex specific exclusion which says that even the development or maintenance of a facility is covered under construction activity so yes this activity will be covered under uh, the category of cost records andhra pradesh twinkle haryana rewadi pune maharashtra is uh, you know goshal very good chandigarh maharashtra mansi maharashtra manisha odisha perfect kerala ajnas guwahati assam abhishek kumar sharma guwahati beautiful beautiful state guwahati kolkata brilliant and guys i want to know one more thing guys whether are you giving only group 4 in the upcoming attempt or both the groups so those who are giving only group 4 write 4 and those who are giving both the groups write both let's see who is giving which group okay raipur chatisgarh jamshedpur tamil nadu west bengal pune okay nidhi Shar nidhi suman is from pune very good amchi pune both manisha bherera both visakhapatnam surendra both nidhi fourth only four joshika fourth alagu both shreya group four amitesh four very good very very nice guys durgapur west bengal very good guys brilliant 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 it is amazing to interact with all of you all of you now let us start the important section guys most important rule of your syllabus rule 4 rule 4 is related to um, cost audit and cost audit was given in section 1482 so now i am referring to section 1482 which is cost audit and what are the provisions which are applicable on cost audit that is what we are going to study now so i'll directly take you to this table please see this table okay now rule 2 is little bit complicated uh, rule 4 is little bit complicated it is not as easy as rule 3 because rule 4 contains twin conditions which are required to be satisfied if you want cost audit to be performed for your company cost record had only one condition which is 35 crores overall turnover of the company and the condition was same for table a and table b condition was absolutely same for table a and table b however in case of cost audit the condition is not same for table a and table b condition is different for table a and table b uh, so the conditions are these are the conditions of table a and table b um, which are there which are there in case of cost audit so let's read these conditions very very important guys please read them very very carefully and yes you need to learn them you need to learn them so if you are uh, thinking about cost audit of uh, uh, category a goods then overall turnover of the company should at least be 50 crores aggregate turnover of individual products for which cost records are prescribed is 25 crores 50 crores 25 crores so when you are analyzing cost audit requirement of the 
regulated goods goods which are categorized under product uh, uh, under, under the table a then you have to see these thresholds 50 crores total turnover of the company 25 crores for individual products which are covered under cost records okay now let us not move forward let me give you a practical question for this part okay let me give you a practical question for this part yes very good very good wow sabko yaad hai bhai ye to sabko yaad hai perfect perfect okay let me give you a practical question okay let us get back to our original okay so product x is table a product okay 50 crore overall turnover individual turnover should be at least 25 crores okay so overall turnover of the company is 51 crores and product a turnover out of this is 26 crores please tell me in the chat box please tell me in the chat box cost audit applicable or not cost audit applicable or not you know these can be anyone this can be anything you know just mine reduce 51 and 26 this can be anything so i'm not fuzzy about product y and product z i'm fuzzy about product x please tell me cost audit applicable or not audit hoga ya nahi hoga yes audit hoga perfect perfect audit hoga audit hoga example number 2 this is 16 crores but audit hoga ya nahi hoga product x 16 crores audit applicable or not product x 16 crores product x 16 crores audit applicable or not audit applicable or not product x 16 crores answer is no very good answer guys very good answer answer is no perfect 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 now i'll change this question a little bit assume that product y is table b product assume that product y is table b product and the table B product turnover is 11 crores. Product table B uh, turnover is 11 crores. Okay. Now you need to tell me, please listen to the question. Don't give the answer. Don't give the answer. Please listen to the question. You need to tell me whether product X will be subject to audit or not. You need to tell me whether product X will be subject to audit or not. Only product X, not product Y. Whether product X will be subject to audit or not. Product X is having turnover of 16 crores. Overall turnover of the company is 51 crores. Whether product X, which is table A, we have only studied the limit of table A. We have not studied the limit of table B, guys, as of now. So I'm asking question related to table A only. I'm not asking question related to table B. Please tell me whether audit, cost audit will be um, uh, done for table A product, which is product X or not. Whether cost audit is required to be done or not. Vishal says yes. Tejasvi says no. Ankita, what is your answer? Ankita Murarka is telling the limits. I don't want the limits. I want the answer. Mansi says yes, applicable. Twinkle says yes, applicable. Ankit Murarka. No, no. Please tell me the answer, Aarti Jain. What is your answer? Yes or no? Whether table A product X will be subject to cost audit or not? Yes or no should be the answer. Ankita says no. Goshal Daki says yes. Aarti Jain says no. Pooja Shinde says product X will not be subject to cost audit. Now, guys, let me give you the answer. Okay. Very, very critical point, guys. Superbly critical point. And most of the students falter on this particular point. Answer is yes. Table A product, which is product X, will be subject to cost audit. Table A product, which is product X, will be subject to cost audit. Twinkle is also giving the reason. Don't bifurcate mean table interview for threshold include both. Very good, Goshal Dake. Goshal Dake has studied cost audit beautifully. Very good, Goshal Dake. Goshal Dake has studied cost audit beautifully. Very good. Yes, yes. So guys, now, now please understand what is the concept, okay? Now this is the point where I would definitely want to spend 2-3 minutes. Overall turnover of the company should be more than 50 crores. Fulfilling the condition. And the second condition is aggregate turnover of the products which are covered under rules uh, uh, of cost, cost record rules. Aggregate turnover is to be considered. It should be more than 25 crores. The aggregate turnover is more than 25 crores. It is in fact 27 crores. So when it is 27 crores 
and when we are analyzing table a product table a product x will be subject to cost audit so most student make this mistake they take only 16 crores as the threshold and they say no cost records are not uh, cost audit is not applicable absolutely incorrect please read the section once again it says aggregate turnover of the individual products services for which cost records are prescribed it nowhere says where cost records are prescribed only for table a no for all the products for which cost records are prescribed which is table a and table b so we always take the aggregate we always take the aggregate okay that is very very important point so that is why these limits are very tricky and these limits are very very important similarly guys uh, table b product overall turnover should be 100 crores and aggregate turnover of individual products should be 35 crores that is the um, uh, limit for table b products which are non regulated 100 crores and 35 crores so similar um, you know interpretation is applicable on this particular product as well now exclusions are there okay certain exclusions are there uh, the companies which are not subject to cost audit what are the exclusions let's see now clear sir tejashwi shripada says now clear yes guys absolutely clear okay so so what are the exclusions to cost audit number 1 a, a, a company whose revenue from exports of product covered under table a and table b exceeds 75% of the total revenue when the revenue from exports which is in foreign exchange when these revenues exceed the 75% uh, of total revenue benchmark then which means you are primarily an exporter okay if you are primarily an exporter then cost records are not applicable to you even when your turnover is above the threshold limit okay sir then company which is operating from special economic zone cost audit is not required to be um, uh, you know prepared for these particular companies now guys i have a question for you whether a company who's uh, situated in special economic zone and if its turnover is above for 35 crores and it is producing a good which is covered in a table a and table b will cost records be applicable for that company answer in the chat box will cost records be applicable for that company answer in the chat box so if a company is there who's uh, you know into special economic zone who's working from special economic zone uh, you know that company is working from special economic zone and it has a turnover of more than 35 crores for the specified goods whether cost records are applicable for that company or not cost audit is not required that is for sure but whether cost records are required or not answer is yes cost records are very much required yes cost record to hoga bhai cost audit nahi hoga cost record to hoga cost audit nahi hoga very 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 important point guys very important point okay so that is the concept okay and last one is which is engaged in generation of electricity for captive consumption if some company is generating electricity only for captively consuming it which means they produce it and internally they uh, consume it then they are not applicable for cost audit uh, in this particular case okay sir got it so yes these were the um, uh, you know concepts which are related to table a and table b very very important concepts guys and one notorious provision okay once you are inside the purview of cost records or cost audit once you are there there's no way out there's no way out you have to permanently be there with cost records and cost audit ajeeb zabardasti hai ha ji ha zabardasti hai chipku chipku section hai chipku section which is what which is if a company meets the eligibility criteria in one year and if in the subsequent year the turnover drops below the specified limits rule shall be applicable for all the subsequent years notorious criteria but yes this is a fact that once you cover once you are into this net of cost audit and cost records you will be there forever forever no looking back no looking back <laughs> so yes a notorious section so this is guys maintenance of cost records and yes you definitely need to remember these four forms guys these four forms you definitely need to remember cra1 cra2 cra3 cra4 what is the use of these uh, uh, forms okay ek bar fas gaye to lagega hi yes twinkle cra1 cra2 cra3 cra4 cra4 is an xbrl format cra2 is an xbrl format because they are to be submitted to the ministry cra1 and 3 are not an xbrl format because they are not to be submitted to the ministry or ministry of corporate affairs okay so cra1 cra2 uh, cra1 cra2 cra3 cra4 these are the forms which you should remember very very profoundly cra1 is for particulars of cost to be included cra2 is for appointment of cost auditor cra3 is for cost audit report cra4 is for submission of cost audit report to central government yes sir perfect perfect guys very 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 good 
okay uh yes these are generic things guys these are the penalties and yes now we come on to the next rule rule number six again an important rule because from an exam standpoint guys a question can come from this particular rule in a theoretical way okay even a case study can come from this particular rule rule number six um uh, cost audit what are the um uh, you know requirements of cost audit uh what are, how are cost auditors appointed okay appointment of cost auditor okay so rule six appointment of cost auditor how would the cost auditor be appointed the company satisfying threshold limits under rule four must appoint a cost auditor within 180 days please remember within 180 days of the commencement of the financial year within 180 days of commencement of the financial year so guys within 180 days of commencement of the financial year you must appoint your cost auditor so that is the threshold limit um uh, uh, appoint a cost auditor you need to appoint a cost auditor okay cost auditor should give his written uh, written consent and certificates in the following manner okay so these are the certificates which order is required to be submit uh, required to submit to the company that is not disqualified <clears throat> it is not disqualified for appointment as an order it satisfied criteria provided under 141 uh which are disqualification which is studied in the last class propose appointment is within the limits let down the companies act list of pending proceedings are also given by the auditor so these are the requirements which the auditor will give to the um uh, to the company then company must inform cost auditor about his appointment and file a notice of appointment with the central government the cost auditor um uh, the cost auditor our auditor appointment the company must inform to the central government within 30 days of the board meeting or 180 days of the commencement of the financial year whichever is earlier very very important threshold guys the Uh, intimation is required to be given to the ministry within 30 days of the board meeting or 180 days of the commencement of the financial year whichever is earlier so it means that you know if your board meeting happens on 15th of may then you have time only till 14th of june to send an intimation to government of um, to send an intimation to government central government okay but if you are appointing your auditor only say at fag end of 15th of september then you don't have entire one month because one it days from the end of the financial year is the ultimate threshold then you can only file the uh, uh, form by 28th september which is one it days threshold okay 28 27 september okay sir got it sub rule 3 up auditor shall continue to um, um, be in this capacity up to 180 days of the closure of the financial year so up till closure of the financial year beyond that one it days the tenure is of the cost auditor okay then any casual vacancy with the office of cost auditor shall be filled by board of directors within 30 days of occurrence of such vacancy you are aware about casual vacancy casual vacancy means in the event of death of the uh, of the auditor or when he resigns or any other inadvertent situation and whenever there is a casual vacancy then the appointment is to be done within 30 days and the board of director would need to make this appointment and yes rest of the provisions are pretty straightforward and very very important guys very very important okay a question can come from this particular part which is sub rule 7 provisions of sub section 12 of section 143 which is related to fraud of the act and the relevant rules made there under shall apply mutus mutandis means in the same manner they'll apply to the cost auditor as they apply to the statutory auditor so fraud provisions fraud reporting requirements are applicable to cost auditors as well that is the most important thing okay love from kerala all right thank you so much yes harshit i will try to take some sessions on spm bvm also i understand that you guys require that also definitely i will try to do that okay okay one diy let's see who is able to solve this diy guys please solve this diy rajvik auto automobiles has uh, to get the cost audit conducted for fy 2019-20 for a four set audit the company proposes to appoint messrs rk associates the company about due date of the appointment of the cost auditor what is the due date of appointment of the cost auditor for the relevant under the following two situations board meeting held on 17th april 2019 board meeting held on 17 september 2019 please <clears throat> write the answer in the chat box मेरे सवालों का जवाब दो 
दो ना तो आपको बताना है व्हाट इज द थ्रेश ऑफ अपॉइंटिंग द कॉस्ट ऑडिटर इन केस वन एंड केस टू व्हाट इज द थ्रेश ऑफ अपॉइंटिंग द कॉस्ट ऑडिटर यस थर्टी डेज यू विल काउंट थर्टी डेज सेवनटींथ मे विल बी द थर्टी डे परफेक्ट सेवनटींथ मे विल बी द थर्टी डे फर्स्ट फर्स्ट केस सेकेंड केस सेवनटीन सेप्टेम्बर इज द डेट वेन बोर्ड मीटिंग इज हेल्ड सेवनटीन ऑफ सेप्टेम्बर सेकेंड केस वॉट विल बी द ड्यू डेट केस टू ट्वेंटी सेवन सेप्टेम्बर एक्चुअली ट्वेंटी सेवन सेप्टेम्बर इज द लास्ट डेट नॉट ट्वेंटी ईयर ट्वेंटी सेवन सेप्टेम्बर perfect perfect within one it is perfect guys very very good answer okay these are very generic sections guys okay most important guys most important very very important very 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 important waste multiplier a practical question from this particular um uh, you know concept will come not mandatorily but yes most likely it comes in every session so very very important concept of waste multiplier concept of waste multiplier what is the concept of waste multiplier what is the um, uh, you know per unit production from first unit from the first process that will give one unit production in the last process that is the concept of waste multiplier very very important concept okay waste multiplier is that quantity of output from any process which will be needed to get one uh, quantity of final output that is the waste multiplier please mark very very important against this particular question so guys uh, you know you will be given various processes like blow room carding draw frames rowing ring frame reeling you will be given various processes you will be given input and outputs of these various processes and you need to find the waste multiplier you need to find the waste multiplier <clears throat> very 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 important um from an exam standpoint how to calculate this waste multiplier so as the first step in calculating the waste multiplier is that you need to calculate the loss you need to calculate the loss and i will not do the entire question because it will take a lot of time i'll just do one two parts and then i'll be um asking you to replicate those parts in other parts as well okay first of all you need to um calculate the loss okay so 46 72 560 has been introduced minus 42 58 270 has been produced so the loss is 40 uh, 4 lakh 14290 we divide this by the um uh, cotton which is processed which is 4672560 we'll get the percentage uh, loss which has uh, been incurred the percentage loss which has been incurred is 8.87% 8.87% is the loss which has been incurred okay we'll compute the uh, output what is the output in percentage forms what is the output in percentage form both of these are computed according to percentages okay so if we assume 100 which is the input minus 8.87 it gives me an output of 91.13 percentage output is 91.13 percentage output is 91.93 oh wow you guys have already computed the waste multiplier also brilliant <laughs> good so output is 91.13 okay so in the second part guys 42 फिगर ऑफ सिक्स पॉइंट नाइन सेवन परसेंट नाउ बी केयरफुल Okay, now be careful of the next uh, output which I am going to produce. Okay, next output is if ninety one percent has been introduced, then the uh, the the percentage loss is sixty one sixty point nine seven. So what I am going to do is I am going to uh, 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 you know compute the output using ninety one one point one three as the input. So ninety one point one three minus six point nine seven percent. This gives me a figure of eighty four point. Seven eight percent. You need to understand this point only. This is the specific point which is very very important. This is the specific point which is very very critical. So while reducing six point nine seven, you don't have to reduce it exactly from ninety one point one three. But what you have to do is you have to first of all multiply ninety one point um one uh, three 
into 6.9%, 97% and then reduce it. Okay. So 91.13 minus 6.97%, that is the, um, that will give you 84.78. So, so on and so forth, you will compute all the output percentages and then whatever is the last percentage, you will keep it in denominator and you will keep this in numerator and you will be computing the waste multiplier. Simple as it is. Okay. But this is very, very, very important. Why is it very important? Because, um, you know, a mandatory question uh, is coming in from this particular concept in every attempt, almost in every attempt, a mandatory question is coming from this particular concept. So waste multiplier, very, very, very important. Okay, sir. Got it. Then next important part of your practical from this particular chapter, capital employed. What is the capital employed in any business? So capital employed will cover three things. Net fixed assets, non-current investments, and net current assets. These three things will club together to form capital employed of any business. Net fixed assets, non-current investments, investments which are non-current. Non-current means long-term investments. Long-term investments. Okay. These are to be included while calculating capital employed and net current assets. So obviously guys, everything which is being added over here has got some logic. Why is it being added? I'm not discussing the logic over here because it will take a lot of time to uh, uh, make you understand the logic. So I'm quickly making you just revise the formula. So capital employed includes all these three things, non-current investment, net current investment and net fixed assets. Capital employed excludes, capital employed will not have capital work in progress, revaluation, current investment, investment in other companies, investment in buildings, not used for business, preliminary expense, debit of profit loss account. These are not included in capital employed. That is the formula of capital employed. Okay. Pretty much a straightforward and a simple uh, concept guys. The next concept is net worth. Net worth, again, a very, very important concept. Net worth means what is the book value of shareholders equity in your business? That is the net worth. Okay. Net worth means paid up share capital plus all reserves created out of profits plus security premium account plus forfeited shares and plus surplus. So whatever belongs to the equity shareholders, that is my net worth. Whatever belongs to the equity shareholders, that is my net worth. Okay. Everything which is belonging to the equity shareholders, that is my net worth. Net worth is the book value of equity shareholders. Okay. Then, okay. Yes, these things are very, very important, guys. Value addition. What is value addition? Value addition is revenues which have been earned during the year minus the revenue from operations, uh, revenue from operations minus any kind of cost of bought out inputs and cost of bought out material. Cost of bought out inputs and cost of bought out uh, material. So uh, revenue minus cost of bought out inputs. That is the formula for value addition. Again, it includes material, cost of material, process material, consumption of stores, spares, utility, others, etc. This will give you the figure of value addition. Value addition is um, one of the most important ratios which are required to be calculated in this particular um, uh, section. Okay, sir. And distribution to different claimants. Rate. So guys, uh, we are just revising the formula. Your responsibility is to actually do the practical questions also because that is a very important thing. All right. Some miscellaneous ratios which are, uh, uh, you know, required to be made, which are uh, computed while calculating the, uh, while preparing the cost uh, uh, audit report. Yes, yes. I will be sharing the PDF as well. No worries in that. Okay. So what is the different ratios which are, uh, you know, uh, required to be inserted in the NXJ to cost audit report? Profitability ratio, which is return on capital employed. Please remember the ratio. Return on capital employed is EBIT, earning before interest and after tax, divided by average capital employed. That is the formula for return on capital employed. Return on equity formula is profit after tax divided by net worth or the shareholders fund. That is return on net worth. Profitability ratios, which is gross profit ratio, operating profit ratio and net profit ratio. It gives you the profitability um, uh, percentages of different uh, kinds. Gross profit, operating profit and net profit. Solvency ratio, whether you are solvent or not, whether you can meet your short term liabilities if they arise, whether you, you are able to meet them or not. So current ratio, current assets divided by current liability. Solvency ratio, debt equity ratio, long term debt divided by shareholders funds. Proprietary ratio, shareholders funds, divided by total assets, that is proprietary ratio. Turnover ratio, like asset turnover, net sales divided by total fixed assets. Stock turnover ratio, net sales divided by average stock or inventory. Debtors turnover ratio, average receivables into number of days in the year, divided by credit sales. So these are various ratios which are required to be uh, computed and put in the NXJS2 cost audit report. Why are they put? So that meaningful analysis can be done. 
where are the wastages why profit is not increasing all this analysis can be done only when these ratios are put inside the um, uh, audit report okay sir got it so these are certain questions which are very very important okay now comes the most important part of your uh, chapter guys which is a reconciliation statement okay now reconciliation of profit as per financial and costing records this is a question which will mandatory come in mandatorily come in your examination reconciliation please mark it as very 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 important mark it as very 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 important this question is definitely going to come in your examination guys there is hardly an attempt which has um, you know gone by where uh, this question has not been asked in your examination the reconciliation statement between financial profit and costing profit so guys you should preferably you should um uh, uh, you know use the format which is given in the rules format is that you need to start with costing profit you first of all need to start with costing profit costing profit is the um uh, starting point of your profit reconciliation statement profit according to costing cost accounts that is the starting point okay so profit which is according to the co uh, cost accounts they are to be adjusted uh, uh, and they are to be matched to the financial accounts i'll give you a very simple way of doing it okay you have two hands okay you have two hands i'm drawing these two hands over here suppose these are two hands these are your hands okay you write costing profit in one hand which is your right hand right hand you write costing profit and left hand you write financial profit so this is costing profit this is financial profit if you are starting with costing profit then you can only change the position of costing profit hand and if you are starting with financial profit then you can only change the um, uh, you know financial profit hand so if you are starting with costing profit then you know if your profits are in this situation whereby financial profits are more costing profits are less then you will add in costing profit to make it equal to financial profit if your costing profit is high and your financial profit is less then you will reduce from costing profit to make it equal to the financial profit this is how you can actually play with your hands during examination at the cost of the examiner thinking that you have uh, you have done uh, out of your mind and you don't understand what is happening even at that risk you will you can do this so that your reconciliation can be done easily so it's like bank reconciliation very good twinkle it's actually like bank reconciliation statement so yes indeed a very 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 important topic from an exam standpoint for all of you profit reconciliation statement okay sir so yes performance analysis some some ratios are there for performance analysis that's okay guys not very very important all right so yes guys these are the ratios which are uh, required for performance analysis economic value added okay yes now this is an important thing so what do you mean by economic value added what do you mean by economic value added economic value added means that what is the increase in shareholders wealth that you have created what is the increase in shareholders wealth that you have created that is economic value added what is the addition that you have made in shareholders wealth that has uh, you know benefited the shareholders that is the concept of economic value added economic value added the formula is capital employed multiplied by rate of return minus the cost of capital so net net whatever shareholders have in their hands whatever shareholders have in their hands after reducing the cost of capital what is cost of capital cost is cost of capital is like dividends whatever dividend dividends are there um uh, you know uh, they are cost of capital from the point of view of the company because company is paying dividends to the shareholders okay so cost of capital rate of return whatever rate of return you have earned on the equity shareholders or the capital employed rate of return minus cost of capital will give you percentage of the net profit or the net value addition which has been uh, in, uh, earned by you and that will give you the figure of economic value added and if you multiply it by capital employed then it will give you the figure in absolute form which is in rupee form they will give you the it will give you the figure all right so yes this was the economic value added for all of you and this is a small question on economic value added which is very very simple okay okay so these are certain very simple ratios which are definitely there in your syllabus but not very important from an exam standpoint so yes guys this was your chapter on cost accounting record rules 2014 of course this is not the entire chapter so this is just a revision of the entire chapter and i have marked the important areas of the chapter 
I've highlighted the areas which will, um, you know, the chances of these areas coming in the examination is more than other areas. So I've highlighted those areas for you. And I've tried to quickly, um, uh, you know, uh, 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 revise the entire chapter. And especially the cost audit thresholds, cost records thresholds, they are the most important thing in the entire chapter because a question from those are, um, uh, you know, uh, it is tentative that they will come in the examination. Sir, EVF formula is different from SPMBV. We can't use the same formula. It is the absolutely the same formula, guys. It is absolutely the same formula. It is absolutely the same formula. SPMBV formula of economic value added and cost audit formula of economic value added. Absolutely the same. It's absolutely the same. So yes, guys, that's all for today's session. And yes, uh, this was chapter two for all of you, which is companies, cost records and audit rules 2014. We'll be coming up with um, uh, uh, more such chapters and more such concepts of cost and management audit in our subsequent sessions. And yes, PDF will be shared of yesterday's session and today's session in the chat box in, in the uh, description box. I'll share a link by tomorrow. I will share the link where these PDFs can be found by you. So yes, that's all for today's uh, session, guys. It was an amazing session. Please hit a like button if you're not done so. And please subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed to the channel as yet. And yes, for the very last time today, how's the Josh? Please write in the chat box. How's the Josh, guys? What is the level of your Josh? What are, what, what, how's the Josh? <clears throat> Deepon says, it's very helpful if notes are provided. Yes, yes, notes will be provided. That's okay. You take the session for IDT and CFR also. Wow. I don't know whether I can take IDT and CFR also. But I'm very sure that whatever I can do, cost right and BMS, that I will surely do. Yes. Hi, sir. Very, very, very high. Superb. Superb, guys. So, yes, guys. Very few days left. Okay. And yes, these days will be very tough for you also because you'll be uh, studying day and night. And you'll be studying on weekends. You'll be studying on every day. And, you know, you'll be sacrificing a lot of things. But don't worry. All these sacrifices which you are doing today for the sake of your studies, they will reap multiple benefits to you. Because tomorrow when you become a CMA and reap a big package in uh, a campus placement, then you will realize that all these sacrifices which you are doing today, all these restrictions which you have imposed on yourself, all the discipline which you have imposed on yourself, all this will bear fruit once you become a qualified CMA. So don't worry. Keep on sacrificing your pleasures. Keep on sacrificing social media. Keep on sac sacrificing your friends, family, everyone. Um, uh, don't meet your friends. Don't attend birthday parties. Don't attend weddings. Because I'm very sure that when you become CMA, then you're going to get these privileges back multifolds. Multifolds. Don't worry. I can give it to you in writing. So don't worry if you are feeling very, uh, uh, you know, very uh, low uh, with respect to your pleasures. That's really okay, guys. Because now the pleasure in our life is getting those three alphabets, which is C, M, A. And that is the end game. That is the luxury. That is the goal of our life today. So yes, all the very best and happy studying. Bye-bye. See you in the next session.